Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to explain the details of this valve body uh, that I took it off a 6SP transmission uh, from a Kia, which is of course used on many models on Kia and Hyundai uh, between uh, 2010 2000, and 2015, and some models a little after that, 2016 17. You may find this one as well. So this is a six speed front wheel drive or all wheel drive transmission. And uh, generally it's used on different cars with different engine capacities. So there are different codes for this transmission uh, like uh, A6GF1, A6MF1, A6MF2, uh, A6LF1 uh, and LF2. So. Uh, A6LF2 is going to go for a bigger engine with a higher torque. Uh, like for a V6 3.5 liter engine, we have same transmission but with higher torque capacity, which is going to be A6LF2. But something like this, which came from a, a smaller engine, this is A6GF1, which is for a 1.6 liter engine. So. For removing the valve body, there is another video on the channel. You can find the video uh, to see how you can drain the transmission fluid and how you can take this one off the transmission. Uh, I put the link for this one on the description as well. And for whatever I'm going to explain today for these valves as well and some other information on the valve body, I put the links again in the description so you can download the files just in case you need if you want to keep the resources. You can just download this from the description uh, to use it later on if, if you need it. As you see on the valve body, we have eight solenoid valves. And each one of these solenoid valves is responsible to do something specific when you are driving the car. So you may have some fault specifically for one specific gear or, or one specific solenoid valves. So it means there are some occasions that you need to inspect the solenoid valves. Again, there are some other videos on the channel for uh, checking each one of these solenoid valves externally on the transmission wiring harness, even before removing the valve body. So sometimes, for example, when you have a fault for each one of these solenoid valves uh, and the code is already appeared, you don't need to go for removing the valve body straight away because the problem could be on the wiring side. So on those videos on the channel, you can find the procedure to inspect the wiring on each one of them and even to check the resistance of each one of these solenoid valves externally as well. Let's introduce all these valves to see which one has actually is operating at what condition. So starting from the right, this is torque converter solenoid valve. This is a VFS normally low solenoid. It means when low current is applied, this solenoid sends a little or no oil to the torque converter valve. But increasing the current allows a controlled flow of oil to the torque converter valve. The second one is uh, 3.5R solenoid valve. This one is VFS as well. As I said from the code, this one is 3.5R. We are expecting this one to be effective on third gear, fifth gear, and reverse gear. But because this one is normally high, with low current applied, this one sends the oil to 3, 5, and R clutch valve. When high current is applied, this one is going to release the clutch. The third one is two and six solenoid valve. This one is VFS as well, but this one is a normally low. It means when high current is applied on this one, solenoid sends the oil to two and six brake. But when low current is applied, this one is going to send little or no oil to the two and six brake. And when I'm saying to high and low current, you can monitor it on a scan tool as well on the other videos we have on the channel you can see how i use the scanner 
to read the live data on each one of them. For example, for this one, when this one is receiving low current, it's going to receive 50 milliamp, and high current is going to receive 850 milliamp. But, so by monitoring those ones, you can see how these ones are working. Solenoid valve number four from here is under drive or UD solenoid valve. This one is VFS as well and normally high. It means when this one is receiving low current, it provides the oil pressure to under drive brake, but providing high current is going to release UD brake. The next one over here is overdrive solenoid valve. This one is normally high as well. It's uh, VFS, again, like the other one. It's going to work uh, at low current. High current is going to release this one. The other two, these two are actually on-off solenoid valves. They are either on or off. They are both normally low. It means when uh, solenoid is activated, it's going to provide the oil pressure. But this one is called SSA, or Shift Control Solenoid Valve A, and this one is Shift Control Solenoid Valve B, just in case if you have any specific fault for each one of them. And the last one right here is Line Pressure Solenoid Valve. This one is VFS as well. And again, this one is a normally high solenoid valve. So right now we know the name of the solenoid valve. And as I said earlier, I'm going to put some resources on description so you can download it. It comes with the picture of the valve body and it gives you all these details as well. But for these ones, for the valves, we have a procedure to test them. So testing procedure for each one of them is actually testing the internal resistance. So using the multimeter, you can check the internal resistance. Majority of them are going to give you uh, same resistance, but we will see uh, the difference on some of them. Like, uh, starting from here, if I measure the resistance for torque converter solenoid valve, so I'm getting 5.3. 5.3 ohm for torque converter solenoid valve. The second one, the second one right here, which is 3.5 R solenoid valve, It gives me 5.3 again. Third one, which is 2 and 6 solenoid. Same as story, same resistance, 5.3. And fourth one, which is UD break. I have 5.3 again. This one for overdrive. So I still have 5.3. So up to here, they are all 5.3. Let's move on to shift control solenoid valve, to this on and off solenoid valve, to see what is the resistance on them. So I started from SSV. OK, as you see, this one is giving me more than 10. So a specification on the workshop manual is between 10 to 11. This one is 10.5, which is OK. The next on-off solenoid valve right here is going, to be, is going to be the same. Again, 10.4. And last one is VFS. It should be, again, like the other solenoid valve, 5.3. All right. So what we measured, all the VFS solenoid valves, these five and this one, when you check the internal resistance, you should have 5.3. And these two VFS solenoid valves, you should expect something between 10 to 11 ohms. This is how you make sure the solenoid valves are okay, at least the electronic side of them. Okay, let's go for removing the solenoid valves. As you see right here, we have, we have some bolts, and those bolts are actually holding a plate right here, and those plates are 
holding the solenoid valve. So I have to remove the bolts to remove the plate, then I can take the solenoid valves out. Now, as you see, uh, this is how we can remove the solenoids to inspect them, to clean them if it is needed, or to replace them. So what I removed right now is actually the uh, torque converter solenoid valve. So for the other ones, I can do the same thing. Just do it very carefully. So this is 35R solenoid valve and for the other one too. I'm going to just put this one back in. And if I remove one of these on-off solenoid valves, this is on-off, which is different from the VFS. So this is VFS, this is on-off solenoid valve. They are different. So when you remove it, you're going to make sure that these O-rings are OK, they don't get damaged, and there is one just filter over here just to protect the solenoid itself. And you check it for any abnormality or any sort of uh, sludge around. If there is anything, you need to just uh, clean it thoroughly. So we already had a look at the solenoid valves. I put this retainer on in here as well just to make sure that it keeps all the solenoid valves seated properly because I'm not actually worrying only about the solenoid valves. Inside these valves, right here, I do have some other valves, the control valves control valves with springs, they are not all exactly similar. They are different. So if you, don't hold, if you don't tighten this bracket back up, if you turn the valve body, all of these solenoid valves are going to fall off. And the next things are going to be the valves inside. In that case, you will have so many components on the bench, and you don't know which one goes where. So for this one, I'm going to share some information that I have for actually for all those control valves the direction, how to install them. I will share them here and on the description. So you got to be careful about that. That's why I put the bracket right now with three of these bolts to make sure that the solenoids are not coming out. If we have a look at the other side of the valve body, we have this section that we call it accumulators. So accumulators are actually for absorbing the pressure. It means when line pressure goes high, to control that sudden high pressure, our accumulator is going to dampen the pressure and it's going to give it back to the system gradually. So what happens under here, we have the accumulators which are spring-loaded and the main problem for some of my friends who asked me to make this video was that uh, actually they were confused between these springs because they removed here, they forgot to take a photo and they couldn't remember where to put the springs back Okay, so you remove this plate and you have all the accumulators and the springs. You see they come with different colors. They are, this is actually a guide for you guys to remember where to put them. And uh, some of them, they have double springs. Some of them, they come only with one spring. So if I remove this one, this is the accumulator and it comes with two springs. So when line pressure goes high, the pressure over here, the pressure under the accumulator is, is going to push the accumulator up. So accumulator will move by actually, of course, by compressing the spring. This helps to dampen the sudden pressure increase. And later on, these springs are going to push the accumulator back down to send the pressure back into the line. All right, so this is the accumulator. We can just put it back inside. You can take a photo. As I said, I do have some details and information that I'm going to share it with you guys as well for this video. I have some oil passages on here. This one goes to the UD brake. This one goes to the LR or low and reverse brake. This valve body does have three layers. This is the outer layer middle and inner one. So it does have three 
layers. So if you remove all these bolts, you are actually dismantling the entire valve body. And there are many steel balls and springs inside. You don't want to uh, get confused with them. Because if you remove this one and you are not careful about the location of them, if you lose them or if you forget the location of them, so you're going to be in trouble. So I will share some information again for those ones, just in case if you have dismantled these ones and you don't remember where to put those springs and valves, uh, it might be helpful for you guys. So please don't forget to have a look at the description to find those files. I hope you enjoyed the video. There are many other videos for transmission. Some of them are uploaded, some of them are coming up very soon. So please don't forget to subscribe the channel to get the notification when we upload those new videos.